Ah, man, we got to take another flight. It's Monday night. You know what? We've done over 100 episodes, and I'm starting to feel the doldrums, and I think there's only one thing that could pick me up. What's that? A beer, but not just any beer. A beer from a place that's not around here. Craftbeerclub.com. That's the place where I get beers that aren't from the where I live. Exactly. They're going to ship you 12 bottles of beer every month. Damn right they are. Four different kinds. Two from one brewery, two from another brewery. Right. All right. So four times three. Seven. It's 12. Seven, 12. A, 12. Whole, a whole case of beer. I was going to say 12. So. It's 12 pack. Is it a case? It's a, it's a full case. Full case. Bring it right to your doorstep. That's the worst part about getting beers is having to leave my doorstep. Exactly. Uh, and it's, it's, it's in a brown box, so it doesn't say like, alcohol, please take me to your leader. Right. That's the same way I get my pornography delivered is in a brown box so no one knows. Exactly. Because it's a vice. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's something that you pleasure with yourself with. Right. Nobody else in your block needs to know about that. No, no one needs to know how I pleasure myself. Right. So go to craftbeerclub.com. Put in FCF Network as your promo code. Hell, look at the show notes. It's going to be right there in a classically blue link. Now, let me see if I get this straight. You get $10 off. You Uh get free shipping. You get a surprise price. You get a free Connoisseur magazine, right? Mm -hmm. Am I missing something? No. Good. You get pleasure. Oh, of course. You know what? Pleasure is number one with a bullet. Well, you you were forgetting something. What's that? With each... One, they send you this uh, little f- uh, co- full-color flyer. It's called a Micro Brew News, and it talks about whatever uh, breweries that your beers come from. Right. It talks about each of the beers that you get. And on the back of it, it has some food for your brew. Uh, recipes. This one has for smoked beef brisket. I would love to smoke a beef brisket. Oh, my goodness. Along with some trivia questions. This is incredible. You get all of this when you go to craftbeerclub.com and enter the promo code fcfnetwork.com. Yeah. It's that simple. $10 off a three-month subscription, free shipping, free connoisseur, beer connoisseur magazine, free gift. Do it. Why are you waiting? What else could you possibly ask for? A stripper? I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Welcome, all of my friends, to Couch Pilots, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, but won't you call me the Black Wombat? And across from me is my main marsupial. It's Captain Philip Restisher. Good evening. Good day, mate. How are you? Aye. Good day to you. You know what? You know what? A, um, an adjective in Australia, it's a, It's called somebody's being a randy. Do you know what that means? Like, like they're horny, right? Like... Like uh, I didn't know do I that. I like you, Randy, baby. I didn't know that, and Molly gave me the same line. I heard it on. I was listening to Failure Launch. Okay, and they were talking about. They kept saying, you know, Randy is an adjective. And I didn't understand what they were talking about. In this country, Randy just means that you're a pedophile from the 1970s. Thank you. You're welcome. And so I got a hold of our Australian connoisseur. Go to the source. Yeah. Yeah. You know, are, are you if you want to if you want to talk about good whiskey, are you going to talk to people in Texas? No, no, I'm going all the way to Ireland. Thank we, you. You're welcome. <laughs> Ooh, that's different. Um, so I got a hold of Didi. I said, "Hey, what's a Randy?" Yeah, and he and she said, "It's an, it's like an adjective." She knew for, immediately well, what oh, you're yeah, talking yeah. about. She said, "You stupid idiot! <laughs> How dumb are you, Americans? Right, Americans." Mm-hmm. And so now I go around saying, "Honey, I'm Randy." And she's like, thank God, a different guy. And you're like, no, it means I've got a raging mega hard two-ton milk boner. Yeah, but and she's like, oh, I wish it was the other guy. <laughs> but I'll take the milk boner. <laughs> it's good to see you. Are you ready to take a flight? I'm so ready. Um, I just, I did all my morning stretches. Um, I'm eating nothing. I'm on a hard-boiled egg diet right now. Oh, because okay. after Thanksgiving, you're trying to lose some of that Thanksgiving weight. Yep, and then um, you always wear white after Thanksgiving, unlike Labor Day. So I'm just I'm always I'm eating white. I'm wearing white. 
Um, I'm waiting for the white to drop from the sky, that beautiful, fluffy, powdery snow. Oh, don't talk know? about that yet. We're, we're already... The, our plow mm-hmm. is not a DSJ still doesn't have it up and running for the winter. You know what happened last year is he didn't mix the oil with the gas. He just put straight oil in it, and then he left it all all summer long, and it got it evaporated. That's right. And now we got a real plow problem. <laughs> Again, how do you know all these things? My wife says to me, "My wife, I got a real plow problem with you, Blake." But. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> But something. Uh, Thanks for laughing at the fact that I have plow problems. I don't. I okay. You're welcome. Uh, but you know, it's 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 easy to sit here and think about all the things that are wrong. But sometimes we just gotta we gotta get out. We gotta leave our problems at our doorstep, mm-hmm. and we gotta go to a party. And last night we went to a party. Oh boy, did we, we went ever. to the Tazewell County Pilots Gala. Yep. Um, huge event. The JCs put it on. It was great in the Rotary Club. This, this is the only time of the year that the JCs and the Rotary Club get together to work on something. Otherwise, they're bitter rivals. <laughs> right. This is where they put, they drop their colors for yep. the night, yep. and they go in in neutral colors. Yeah, they'll drop they their orange. colors and their gun. Uh, yeah, they, they mix their colors together to make orange. <laughs> they got the, you got the yellow, right? You got and the red. yellow JCs and the red Rotary Club. Red Rotary. Red, 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 red Rotary. Red Rotary. Come over, Red Rotary. Send the good. JCs right over, right? <laughs> And then they, yeah, they, a violent game. They put That's a violent game. Red Rover, yeah. Yeah, you would think that there would be tons of broken arms, dislocated elbows, because you used to have to hold hands and then say that, and they had to yeah. bust through. You know, so uh, a kindergarten rolls around. I'm a, a child, and um, I go there, and there's a, a, a lady there, and by a lady, I mean another five year old, and she has one hand, and, she, and the, the the one hand is she's got like a plastic thing on it, and like a like a hook, a metal hook that can open and shut, and um. That girl always had to be at the end of the Red <laughs> Rover line, because I mean, she could she could use the hook to like sure. hold hands with someone else. But if you ran into that hook, oh, oh my god, you're going to be gut like a fish. Uh, well, last night's event, um, me and the stewardess Molly, we we, we went together. Um, we took the we took the limo, hmm. and when I, we were waiting for you to show up, and we thought you would have a day, but you went stag to this this gala. I'm a stag man. I'm a stag man. Bow, bow. I'm a stag man. If the stag man can do it, so can you. I'm the stag man. So <laughs> you were in. You're all dowled up in your tuxedo, mm-hmm. right? Oh, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I've been saying tuxedo for like 20 years. <laughs> no, it's tuxedo. Oh my god, I feel like an idiot. Just right. say mosquito. Tuxedo. Mosquito. Mosquito. <laughs> mosquito. I see. I, I've never said mosquito right either. Mosquito. Mosquito. Mojito. Oh, mojito. But yeah, we you know what we dressed to the nines because sure. the occasion called for it. Sure, and it was a, it was a fundraiser. It was a charity mm-hmm. event. It it was uh, you know the Tazewell County Rotary Club and the JCs. Yep, uh, and it was they were raising money for that all important. What do you call it? A uh, it's a cause. Cause you know it's a cause. It's a cause. It's close to I think both you and I's heart, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. What is that? It, uh, <laughs> kids with cleft palates who can't pronounce tuxedo. <laughs> And they say pretzels. And they say pretzels too. Yeah. And I and I think um, I think that the money we raise is going to help a lot of kids. Oh, it's going to go straight, right? You know, from our hand to their mouth to God's ears, right? Right. Do you think God has ears? I would think so. I like to picture God as just one big ear, <laughs> with with like three or four hairs sticking out of it. Yeah, a little bit of wax to build show up. his age. A little bit of wax buildup. <laughs> yeah. Um, we danced the night away. Uh, mm-hmm. there was. There was one of those photo booths set up, and there were some goofy pictures yep. taken. And um, I was looking on Facebook last night, and there's a picture of you kissing my wife. Um, my? My wife. wife. I thought it was you. But it was dark in there. It was dark, and she was wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> right. And uh, you guys smell she's like... She's gender neutral. <laughs> yeah, she's not a gender-specific being. Whenever you go, whenever you go uh, to a formal event, she always goes neutral. I'm kidding, of course. She wasn't wearing a tuxedo. She was. She had a beautiful gown on, and she looked gorgeous. And I gave her a little peck on the cheek because I was like, I was like, Molly, I've never seen you look so beautiful in sure. your life. You look incredible. I'm so glad you're here with your husband. I'm going to kiss you real quick on the cheek. Hopefully, he's not looking or videotaping this, and hopefully, no one posts a picture of it on Facebook. All of that happened. It turns out. Yeah, exactly. But um, but I goddamn it, if I didn't get my kiss, it was it was a good time. Um, we had uh oh gourmet food. We had um some uh hot dogs. Gourmet. Gourmet hot dogs. All Frank. All, all beef Frankfurters. Those are the best kind. I won't eat any other kind of except all beef now. Yeah. 
I, I want the kosher dogs. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want those things where you don't know what's in it. Like I don't want lips and, and anuses. Hoofs. Yeah, and hoof meat <laughs> and, and, and curly Q tails. You know, I don't want pig foreskin sure. wrapping and ca- being the casing of my, my hot dog. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and there was a, oh, it was, a, it was a really good dip. Well, do you remember what the dip was that was there? Yeah, it was a buffalo chicken dip. And it was, uh, it was made from a real buffalo, though, by a real buffalo. So it was kind of like a weird cannibalistic thing where the buffalo prepared its own. It was good. There was some, uh, some fresh salsa made. Yeah. I really enjoyed that fresh salsa. Whoever made that, I'd blow them. <clears throat> um, so, you know, me and Molly, after we left, you mm-hmm. know, we were, we were a little tipsy. And we went home and yeah. we, had a few more drinks. What did you do after the dance? Boy, um, I had to walk home, unfortunately, oh, because yeah. you were my ride, and uh, you left me, and uh, I was in no no like I couldn't even come into your vehicle if I wanted to. I was so blitzed. Wow! That I, had to, I had to make my way home, so I followed the North Star because um, uh, I was thinking, you know, I I feel like I'm enslaved by my drunkenness. So what did the slaves do? They followed the North Star. What did I do? I ended up about 35 miles away from my house. So, um, so what uh, happened this morning then? I mean, you, you walked all night long? I walked all night long until I sobered up. Um, I was picked up by um, a farmer, thankfully, because I was in the middle of his field. He took me home. Uh, I said, don't sleep with my, uh, my, uh, my farmer daughter, and I, um, I did exactly that. You slept with her this morning after he told you not to? Yeah. I did, yeah. Man, you're ballsy. Yep. That's, that's what awesome. happens when you that's what happens when you go stag places. You end up in some farmer's daughter's bed. So, um I mean, do you have a hangover today or are you I feel great. Really? Yeah. All right. It's no. probably from having sex with that farmer's daughter. <laughs> there was a there was there a, there was a, I think there was like a text uh like video game called Farmer's Daughter and you like the the mission was to have sex with her. I believe it. I, there was, there was. I would love to play that game. There was like a text. It was kind of like a, um, what was the other one where the uh, Galaga? No, something. It was. It was a guy's name, and you tried to leisure have, suit Larry. Yeah, it, it was like that, but it was just a text-based game. Yeah, it was called a, Farmer's Daughter. Sounds super sexy. I would love to play that text-based game. And it sounds like you had a good night, though. You came home, right? Yeah, had a few more drinks. Had you said? a few more drinks. Uh, took care of business. And what does that mean? You uh, signed some checks? And yeah, I did. I did a lot of the paperwork that we have to do. Um, took care of business, yeah. Yeah, and got our travel log ready for today. I appreciate you doing I, that. I kind of pissed around, didn't do it this mm-hmm. weekend, so I'm ready to go. Good. And you know what I'm ready for? I'm ready to put the uh, the past behind me, the gala behind me, and whatever happened in that farmer's house. I'm ready for some fan feedback. Uh, we got lots of fan feedback. It's been accumulating. Um, nobody's been using the telephone number, but that's all good. Have you been paying the bill for the telephone? Yes, line? I have. So been. it is up and running. It's so. up and running. It's it's it works. I called it the other day just to make sure that it worked. It's nine ten pilots one. It's also you can call nine ten seven four five six eight seven one. Call us anytime. Yeah, please. save that. Call save us. that in your phone. That way, if you ever you know think, oh, I, I want to call. I'm like, oh, I don't remember the number is. It's already in your phone. You got the quick dial, right? You get the top ten quick dials. You go number one, couch pilots. Number two is emergency nine one one. Number three is your grandmother or some shit. But make sure we get that number one spot. Um, I'm trying to skip over some of the CouchCon stuff, if you don't mind. Um, some of it's kind of old old hat, as they say. Is there any CouchCon stuff from people that we don't hear from often? No, there All isn't. Right. Um, let's see, CouchCon, CouchCon. Okay, this is um, uh, from Travis. Uh, Travis Heimel? Yeah, love Travis. Yeah, and uh, he's like, hey, great show as usual. Interesting fact, I did the cover art for Metal Hand of God podcast. Glad you guys thought it looked cool. That's so awesome. He, yeah. I had no idea he did that. <clears throat> and I said, hey, 1,000 frequent flyer points for you for being a hella awesome. We're going to have to contact him by doing some cover work uh, art for us. I did. And, right. I, and, 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 and I think we're going to try to get something worked out. I have an idea for a cover art, too. I, I drew it up the other day. I want to show you. All right. Cool. Um, Adam Z. Uh, oh, Adam, Adam Z says, also, go LA Lakers. And he, I think that's in response to episode 99 where we had Matthew here and he was very upset uh, with the Lakers and rightfully so. And he said that was a really solid episode of Couch Pilots. I gave him 1,200 points. Yeah, good. Um, for Saddle Rash, Thomas Kingston, our man of mystery, mm-hmm. he says, holy ship, I remember watching this when it premiered. Oh, wow. I still chuckle thinking about a no-armed cowboy kicking a man in the nuts. 
five out of seven. Oh wow, that's a that's always great when we get a rating from a listener. Sure. And, and you know, it's even greater than that is I think we had uh, Jeff Simpson in here. He's like, I remember watching the Ghost Rider when it was on. So when the people actually have seen the pilots when they aired. That's amazing. That's incredible. So awesome. Thank you, Travis. I said, ha, ha, ha. Not a bad score. Was that, was that Travis? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that was Thomas. Uh, Thomas, I'm sorry. Thomas That's Kingston. awesome, Thomas. And I, uh, I gave him 1,200 points. Um, let's see. Uh, ah, here we go from Didi. Captains. Oh, captains. Congratulations on episode 100. What an achievement. And what a way to celebrate it. The Golden Girls. Yeah. Blake must have been in heaven. To get in the mindset of such a milestone, I have gone back through the archives and re-listened to a few episodes, including the pilot of Couch Pilots. Right. So many memories, so many laughs. laughs. I am so proud to have been part of this amazing journey. Here's to the next 100. Love you guys. Well, thank you. That, well, that was very heartfelt. Thank that you. was very sweet. I appreciate that. How many, how many frequent fire points do you get for that shit? Um... 4,600? Hell yeah. Hells yeah. You guys stroke our ego, you get more points. <laughs> uh, also from episode 100, uh, Lori Garcia says, Great episode, loving the camaraderie. When will I be a special guest on the show? You know, uh, Lori Garcia and I have had some uh, off-air conversations as of late, and, oh. she, and, I, and I think she is going to call in sometime. I'd love to have her on the show. Well, that'd be awesome. Um, and I think I told her, I think I said, you know, uh, get your ass over here, I think is what I put. Well, I, I had talked to her, and I said, you know, we've had people, like, we called your mom live. <laughs> right. We called uh, Kevin Clark from the Let's Try This podcast, so Conrad, who lives right out there by Lori Garcia. So if, if Conrad can do it, so can you. I'm the stag man. I'm the stag man. All right, here we go. Uh, again, great episode. Loving the camaraderie. Oh, I, I read that part. I said, oh, yeah, I said, it's up to you. Are you going to fly here soon? And she put couch pilots. I wanna. I thought you'd fly down here and pick my ass up. And then Dee Dee says, "Make sure Jason keeps his pants on Ooh. and his robe tied." <laughs> and I said, "After CouchCon 2017, we are not allowed in the Sacramento airport. We we cannot go there anymore. Mm, no, we we failed to mention that earlier, but we yeah we're not we're not invited back to the Golden State as it is." And then Dee Dee says, "That's what happens when you have an overabundance of link sausages." <laughs> We, uh, <laughs> they're so juicy, all right? <laughs> they, were, they were the juiciest. Um, couch Pilots, uh, Lori Garcia says, Couch Pilots, new rule for Jason. Hands must be visible at all times. Boy, they're really letting me have it here. Mm. Um, yeah, well, that's fine. And I'll save some more. I, we, we've got a few more. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sexual pariah. Pariah. Ba-da-ba-ba-bum. Oh, also, uh, Dee Dee sent us a picture of, uh, I believe it's Buttercup. And that is her, what she drives all day at, at work. Okay, very cool. It doesn't even have a, I don't know, I was like, that's bullshit. It doesn't even have like a roof on it. If it rains, she's. Uh, well, Australia's hot, right? Am I correct in that it's a hot ass place? Yes, it's the, hot, it's, it's it's the hottest place on earth. Oh, geez. Poor, yeah. poor gal. Yeah. So thanks for the fan feedback. Again, uh, you can email us, find us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, Inst- Insta- Instagram. Instagram. And then call us. We can always call us. We love to hear. 910 Pilots 1. Call us any time of day. Leave us a message. You know we're going to talk about it. And most importantly, you're going to get frequent flyer points. And that's what you want, right? That's what you want. That's what you want, baby. That's what you want, baby. Ladies and Golden Girls, right? They said uh, they said we're gonna send you to heaven. That must have sent you to heaven. But you know what? Now I'm gonna send you to hell. What? Because today we discussed the pilot episode of Tales of Frankenstein from the year of our Lord, nineteen hundred and fifty-eight. Woo! Great year. I, I can't. I can't. I honestly can't tell you if it was a great year or not. I I, I was not around. Um, the fifties were great. I mean, you had. Um, things like war, chubby checker, baseball, uh, a different one. <laughs> Shit, what else was back then? I don't know. I uh, was I was negative seventeen. Dennis the Menace, probably. Oh yeah, uh, Mr. Ed. Yeah, they stuck a carrot up his asshole to make his mouth. Move. I thought they put peanut butter in his mouth. What That's more appropriate. Yeah, I think the Peter would be less mad about that than sticking <laughs> a carrot up a horse's asshole. 
uh, PETA was just an Australia guy trying to say the word Peter back in 1958. Um, I forgot to tell you what this show is about for people who don't oh, listen. sorry. No, it was my fault. I wanted to get to the heaven and hell thing because oh. I thought about it earlier. It's good. Um, they say you can only count on two things in life, death and taxes and failed television pilots. Well, smart guy, that's three things, and I will never die. So figure that out. It's couch pilots. We're never going to die. I can't imagine a scenario where I don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> The world revolves around us. Yeah. We are, everyone else is just a player in our play, mm-hmm. right? The world is, is revolving on the shell of a turtle who is sitting on top of a shell on a turtle, and there's turtles all the way down. In the theater of life, you and I are their co-stars. Mm-hmm. You know what? And I don't mind being on the bottom of the call sheet just as long as I can be in it. You're on, hey, buddy, as far as I'm concerned, you're number two. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, you're number two. <laughs> oh, boy. 1958. Boy, oh, boy. We talked about it recently. Going back in time. Just, you know, not physically, because you fuck something up. It's, it's going to have repercussions. Butterfly but, but effect. But wouldn't, wouldn't you yeah. like to be there? Just to kind of just kind of look around and say, hey, that's not there where, I, where I'm from. That's not there now. Right, that wasn't there. If, if, you, if you go back there and you buy someone a Coke, mm-hmm. there could be ramifications to that. Yeah. You know, because they put cocaine, like pure cocaine in it back in the 50s. Back in the 1950s, uh, Coca-Cola was about 50% pure, uncut Columbia cocaine. Nice. I guess it was nice. I, I would love to find out. High I five that shit. <laughs> nice. This show is built in the back oh of his back God. burbs. Tooth came out. But 1958, I know that I wasn't there and I didn't experience it firsthand, but that's not going to stop me from going there. In In my my mind. mind. We have to go back in time because that's the only way to view this pilot and properly process it. Because if we watched it by today's standards... It sucked. It would blow. It would would be horrible. We have have CGI, Courtney Cox. Color. um, Band-Aids. The Spice Girls. We have audio erotic asphyxiation. French baguettes. You know what? There's still people. We shouldn't diss them because they're French baguettes. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know what? You want to lie with a man? You want to lie with a woman? Doesn't matter to me, French people. <laughs> just shave your armpits, won't you? Right. That, yeah, seriously. That, I don't care who you're fucking. Just shave yourself. Yeah, let's, let's, we're trying to have a civilization here. Am I right? Mm-hmm. So 1958, we say, what happened? How can we uh, go back there in, in our, our minds? minds? I like that. That's our new thing. Yeah. I like that. Um, and we do so by talking about things that happened around that time, so we can we can properly go back there. USA, the USS Nautilus, Nautilus reaches the North Pole. Was that a battleship? Um, it's the it, the USS Nautilus is the first nuclear submarine successfully crossed under the North Pole during August, and the first undersea journey to the geographic North Pole. The submarine was captained by Commander William R. Anderson. There's there's no more American name than William no. R. Anderson. And carried four civilian scientists and 111 officers and crew. The submarine began its journey at Point Barrow, Alaska, and traveled under the Arctic ice at a depth of about 500 feet for over 1,000 miles. After making it to the North Pole, the Nautilus kept traveling until it reached the Atlantic Ocean, stopping near Iceland. That's crazy. And I know I watched something not too long ago where they were talking about all the the uh, experiments and all the 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 stuff they're doing up there in regarding to submarines and that the Russians are coming in there and doing their own testing present day, present day. The Russians are in there doing their own stuff and like they could easily like, like they have scientists living there too and all, and they have submarines in there and um, it's, it's kind of like neutral. It's neutral water. Nobody, it's no man's land, right? right. Anyone can go there. And so like Russia has like put a flag up and is like, and they're, they're learning a way to cut, you know, cut the travel time. They're gonna, they're gonna come after us from Alaska. Who, who owns that fucking shit? Is that is that Canada's territory? Or is it is literally no one owns Coca Cola? Coca Cola owns the North Pole. Yeah, that, that's why every year they have those uh, p- those polar bear commercials because that's that's you know they own. They shoot that on location mm-hmm. up there. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, I, you know what? You can't be the only one teaching people. I have to teach people what I don't to. know. Could fill a book, my friend. All right. A, a very huge book with small font. Small font? Like Gone with the Wind size book? <laughs> yeah. 
It's a good point. Of reference. Why do you laugh? It's a, it's a book. It, it, I believe it's a book. I just ha- I have no idea what that book looks like. It's that thick. That's pretty thick, my friend. Thank now, you. Now, <laughs> we'll talk about the book. Uh, North Pole. Now, is that where Santa Claus lives or is it the South Pole? Um, I think it's the North Pole, right? Yeah, it's the North Pole. So I'm wondering if the Russians are like have or he's under the Russians' command now. Are they on the hunt for Santa Claus? They're on the hunt for Red October. What's on the South Pole then? Is that Krampus? Mm, could be. That sounds like a, a you know a woman in her in her. Is menses. the South Pole hot, or is it cold too? What? Well, the, or is it the tippy tippy top and the tippy tippy bottom cold? No, no, no. The North Pole is the coldest place on Earth, right? And Almost. the South Pole is the hottest place on Earth. Oh, that's how it works. So maybe we should we should take a flight to South Pole. I don't want to go to where I want to burn up. Well, we'll just go till it gets too hot, and then we'll land. And like, okay, that's that's the that's as close as we can get. Right. Turn right back around. Smart stuff. Uh, also, 1958 comes around. They say we're gonna have the Brussels World Fa- World's Fair. I've never been to a World's Fair. Also known as uh, Expo 58, it takes place in uh, Brussels, Belgium. Uh, the uh, the World Fair, also known as Expo 58, uh, begins in April of Belgium, or uh, begins during April in Belgium. I'm sorry, I've had a little. It's okay. A little bit of the hair of the dog that bit me. Um, this was the first major World's Fair to be organized after the end of World War II, with the previous World's Fair taking place in New York during 1939 and 1940. New York City! Get a rope. Um, I would love to go to the World's Fair. Do you think so? I, okay, this is what... Summer rolls around, you got little carnivals traveling around, little sure. fairs. Those are fun. Those are silly. You get a little taste of what it used to be like. But when you're you talking... You living on to, the edge because everything's unsafe to ride? Absolutely. You don't know if you're going to pass away or not on one of these tilt worlds But you're talking about the World's Fair? I go over to, you know, Putnam County Fair. That's one thing. But I'm talking about the world, baby. The world. What, do they have rides there and stuff? Or so is it... They, they would used to build structures specifically for the events. Really? Yeah. This, when this, was the last time we had a World's Fair? A long time ago. Because we don't all get along anymore? That's right. Back then, it was a completely peaceful society. After we uh, vanquished all evil in the, in the form of the Nazis, mm-hmm. 1958 rolls around and say, everyone's at peace. Yeah. Let's just have a fair that everyone can go let's, to. Let's try to get back there. Yeah. The World's Fair saw over 41 million visitors before it concluded in October. That goes for a long time, then. It's not just like a weekend. No, no, it's a while. And they said the, the uh, main attraction was an unusually shaped at atonium building. So they build buildings. They build structures and buildings specifically for this event. That's crazy. I would love to go. Mm. I don't live in a time where that's possible. No. That's why we go back there. In our minds. United States, the Hope Diamond is donated to the Smithsonian Institution. You ever hear about the Hope Diamond? It's like the largest diamond ever, right? Yeah, it, it's the diamond by which all other diamonds are measured. And who donated it? Um, jeweler Harry Winston donates the Hope Diamond to the Smithsonian in, no- in November of that year. The legendary 45.2.52 carat blue-hued diamond's history can be traced back to the mid-1600s when it was likely purchased from a mine in India and sold to King Louis XIV of France. So there's some little kids in India that got their hands chopped off probably and died to get that. Yeah, I would, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm against diamonds. I've told Molly that from the first time I met her. I'm against diamonds. Now, is it one of those things where it's like diamonds are so expensive, but you want to come up with like a fake moral stance against them so you don't have to spend all the money? Exactly. All right. I'm with you, buddy. I'm, for that reason, I'm against them, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know me well. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I feel like it's 1958. I feel that way. In I my, my mind. mind. 1950 roll, eight rolls around. I'm negative 23 years old. Ah, uh, that's a good age. How old were you, friend? Uh, negative 17. That's right. Oh boy. And they say, um, you this you you watch Tales of Frankenstein. Who gives a shit? Why would you watch that? And I say, uh, Captain Philip Rushshire could tell you exactly why we watched it. There's three criterias um, how we choose a show to watch. One, it had to be a pilot that was not picked up for series. Whether it was aired or not is irrelevant. But only one, and one only, could be made. Two, we had to find it on the internet. You can't, we can't judge something without watching it. Right? right. That's right. We found it on the internet, and it has to be th- free. And thanks to YouTube, you know what to do, Tube. 
It was free. So those are the three criteria that we use to uh, judge what shows we'll be watching. I go to the internet all the time. Oh. And I, I'm constantly... I, the, the internet is always right up next to your penis mm-hmm. because your, your, your phone is in your pocket. Yeah, and it's a very large phone. Yeah, and never put a phone in your back pocket. I think that's I, You're going to sit on it and shatter it. Yep. But I, I'm a consumer, Blake. You know, I mm-hmm. love consuming things. I'm always taking things in. I find so much on the internet that costs money. Oh, not um, these pilots, though. No, that's and, and these pilots and our podcast have one huge thing in common. Boom, ba boom, ba boom. They're free. You damn straight it is. And say people say, "Okay, smart guy, you're obviously a smart guy because of all the smarts you have." Where can I find this pilot? When I say you can find the entire episode of the Tales of Frankenstein by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links. They're right there in our show notes, or you can go to YouTube, and, and you, you know, know what, what to, to do, do too. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, do you ever. Uh, flight attendants. Please remain seated uh, as we are down crossing the zone. Oh, my gosh. Stop pushing buttons. Um, <clears throat> there's, okay, yeah, I forgot you combined the thing. To make your life easier? You made my life easier, but I, I forgot that you combined things, so now, uh, so I pressed two things like I usually would. Oh. Yeah, but I fucked it up. That's okay. And you know what? I've been fucking up all my life. There he is. There's DSJ down there. Just, yeah. just a speck on the map now. We're in the air. He's still smiling. You know, he's taking care of that baby. Um, we haven't talked about him much lately because he he has been working harder since we had his write up. And Peta has been up our ass too about him, which is odd because Peta's for like the ethical treatment of animals, right? right? And he's not an animal; he's a human being. But they're like they're like he has Down syndrome. He's an animal. He's like no. He's a human being. Yeah, like, like hello. this is some bullshit. Like, I said, get the PETA out of here. Yeah, you and I were like, at first we got that letter, and the PETA was like, stop talking about DSJ. All right, mm-hmm. stop mistreating him. I was like, we're not mistreating anyone. You're about animals. We're talking about a human being. Right. We're not wearing a, a fur coat. No we're- one's throwing blood on us. I tell you that. No. I take a stand right now and say, screw PETA. I'm gonna talk about DSJ. All I want to. Yeah, and if you want to, if you want to come up in our face with some uh, a bag of blood, hey Peta, you want to come up in our face, huh? We'll we'll take you out. We'll uh we'll give you the old one two knuckle shuffle. Am I right? You'll wake up with a horse's head in your bed. I'm gonna take a bat. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna bash your brains out, Peta. You know, see this gun right here? I'm not going to shoot you with a bullet. I'm going to beat you with the butt of this gun on your fucking oh, head. Oh, I'm going to take my time dismantling you, Peter. brains Peter. come out. Peter, you want to send me threatening letters about our retarded friend? Well, fuck your face. He's my best friend. <laughs> He's my best friend. He's my best friend, John. My best friend, John. Summary of the pilot. Dr. Frankenstein has just finished rebuilding his creation, but the monster is unresponsive. He needs to try something different to make it work. Perhaps some new parts. Enter a terminally ill sculptor and his assertive wife. Summary. I'm going to give that an ap- appropriate summary. I'm not going to. Oh! I'm, I'm not going to say it's great. Yeah. Because there was a couple things I didn't like about it, but I'm not going to say it was bad because I want a good vibe going into this. Okay. You know, that's normally where I would say, let's dismantle the summary a little bit, see what you didn't like. But if you want a good vibe, let's 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 go, go past it. Okay. The summary is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, it's, it's it's written in stone right next to the Ten Commandments. Right next to the interesting facts. Ooh, interesting facts. Now, folks, if you've never listened to the show before, interesting facts is just the name of a segment. We uh, had to name it something. Apple Podcast says, what are you going to call this segment? So we're like, all right, interesting facts. Oh, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that translate to? That translates to don't tell anybody whether you think these facts are interesting or not. Absorb them. Consider yourself smarter for knowing them. Consider yourself smarter. Consider yourself part of the Frequent Flyer program. All right, anyway. Uh, yeah, so don't tell anybody. Do you think these are interesting facts? Don't you know? Tell your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mom, your dad, your co-pilot. Here's the thing: if I asked you if you loved all the people you just named, you'd say, "Yeah, absolutely, I love those people." Well, if you love them, let them decide on their own how they feel about these facts. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So that's what we're going to name them. 
You're going to keep your mouth shut, and you're going to accept them. These right. are things you wouldn't know if I didn't look into it and scour as hard as you I did. You scoured so hard, you get bloody knuckles. The episode title, which does not appear on screen, is The Face in the Tombstone Mirror. Fact. That's, I, it's can, a fact. Can I say something? Yeah, w- yeah. You know with you know with which in the parameters you're allowed to say the thing you want to say. Okay. I believe I saw the the title for this during this pilot. Was it like hidden? Like like an Easter egg? It was on the bottom of the screen. Okay. Not the whole time. It was just Okay. Hmm. I might I might have to go back and double fact check that fact. Okay. Oh, Oops. This show's building. This show is spilled on the back of his back burps. Jameson Irish whiskey cask mates. I'll do it to you, apparently. Thanks, Mew Jacob. Yeah, thank you for bringing that to me. Um, the introduction contains stock footage from some of Universal Horror series, including The Brides of Dracula from 1931, The Face and the Crystal Ball in the beginning, who is supposed to be doing the narration, is actually footage that was used at the beginning of all of the Universal's Inner Sanctum features fact that's fact this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna read a fact and i'm gonna tell you it's a fact (laughs) it was a co-production of hammer film productions hammer time oh 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 can't touch this here comes a hammer bump 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 and columbia pictures we've heard of columbia pictures sure christopher columbia pictures that's that's exactly right he sailed the ocean blue and what what year was that uh 1492 you damn straight the film is a mixture of elements from both the Hammer and Universal versions of Frankenstein. Are you saying they mixed two different filmings of Frankenstein to make one? They took both their styles. Okay, and, styles. And, and, okay. and they put in a bowl, and then they mixed it up. And said, I thought you were up? saying they took footage from each one of those. This is elements. Okay. Uh, the film is in the public domain, which means anyone can get their dirty mitts on it and do it. And then oh, we could, have, we could have just played this and not said anything. The, the, this entire episode of Couch Pilots could have just been the audio from Tales of Frankenstein. It probably would have get more downloads. Oh, than yeah, what we definitely. Um, Hammer and Columbia plan to produce a series of 26 episodes uh, with each studio handling 13 episodes. The producers wanted the series to be about Baron Frankenstein as an experiment. Uh, director Kurt uh, Syedmac uh, argued that you cannot carry a whole show with nothing but Frankenstein stories. Fact. You're shaking your head. I'm going to tell you right now interesting facts over. Captain Philip, rest assured, go. That's crazy. I said, how far can these stories go? Frankenstein can't really take you far. We have a lot to talk about, including Twitter responses. We have Twitter responses? Twitter responses. Jason, I can't believe you got some Twitter responses. We don't. They're all dead. I love Metal Hand of God. Ladies and gentlemen. Hola. I am Wayne. I'm the rum guy. I'm Kyle. And I'm Adam. <laughs> and we are the Metal Hand of God podcast. Are we? Yes. Metal. We are the most. What are we? The most what? Dangerous, I think. Dangerous. That's right. We're the are most dangerous, dangerous podcast on the internet. We are. You need a safety vest to watch us? We do. To listen? I guess. Yes. You, you also need a condom. And yes. a hard hat. Yes. Because we will, we will we'll get you pregnant. Yeah. Steel toe boots are required. <laughs> so, if you like silliness dick jokes sometimes serious topics right sometimes yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. no political correctness whatsoever none then we're the show for you that's the metal hand of god podcast and remember to keep it keep it great show twice yeah. a week metal hand of god uh. comes up in your asses in your eardrums and it, it's a great time Two times a week. These are hard-working motherfuckers. I listen to podcasts all day long. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. And a lot of the podcasts I listen to are pretty well-known ones. They got sponsors. They say, hey, uh, real quick, before we keep going, I'm going to talk about stamps.com. And you know what I do? I reach for my phone. I hit skip 15 seconds forward. Skip 15 seconds forward. I keep skipping until I'm out of that commercial. I don't want to hear that shit. When I hear the Metal Hand of God promo... I am in. Oh, yeah. I am zoned You're in. in another I am world. tuned in. I'm like, what are these guys talking about? This is insanity. And God damn it, if that's not their show every single you, week. you will be tired. When you get to listen to it, you'll be, you be tired. you will be tired. And then they should make that their tagline. Not the <laughs> most dangerous podcast on the internet. They're like, Metal Hand of God, listen to us. you, you be, be tired. tired. <laughs> 
boy, oh boy, nothing has grabbed me by the nutsack uh, ever since something like you be tired. Whew, check it out twice a week right here on the FCF Network. These guys are hustling. Hustling. Let's break down Tales of Frankenstein. Ooh, I can't wait. 1958. They said, you know what? Color, who needs it? Black and white. That's the future. Now, um, in 1958, is, this, is everything still black and white? Or? I don't know. Oh, okay. But I know this was. <laughs> okay. Um, the first thing you see is the award theater, right? It comes mm-hmm. up on screen. I don't know what that means necessarily. But then a uh, wolf howls. Yeah, it's a silhouette of a wolf and it howls. Yeah. It's, 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 it's nice. I like it. There's a little bit of a narration up front. It says, from the beginning of time, men have sought the unknown. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yakety schmackety. Uh, basically, they're giving you the backstory uh, of of Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then you're introduced then to... Um, uh, a Baron Frankenstein. A, a well-dressed Baron, uh, Dr. Baron Frankenstein. And he's in his laboratory, and there's all kinds of beakers and now, liquids. Do you, do you think they said laboratory back then or laboratory? Mm, let's see. This was probably old English, so it would be laboratory. <laughs> I agree. Um, and yet the narrator seems to be like a head in a crystal ball, kind of like we meant, touched on in Interesting sure. Facts. And Tales of Frankenstein. It's well, that, and, and it's funny you said that in, in Interesting Facts because it really – the, the the mouth doesn't necessarily sync up to what the person is saying. And they, they then they're just like, fuck it. We're just trying to sell cigarettes during the commercials, you know? <laughs> um, but it's at night. The story opens at night. There's a thunderstorm, and there's, like, servants oh. or people who work for Dr. Frankenstein at his castle, and they're leaving by his orders. They say, well, I want everybody out. Right. He's like, I don't want any of the servants sleeping here tonight. Mm-hmm. And when they're outside in this rain, this is not any ordinary rainstorm. This is guys standing about five feet above these people, just pouring five gallons of bucket, five gallon buckets of water down on them. It is yeah. no, is no even rain. It's just big clumps of huge amounts of rain. I don't like to use the word torrential very often, mm. but God damn it. If there weren't some torrential downpours here, RIP Puerto Rico, RIP the, the narrator is very ghostly in, in with all his talking and um, the, the, all the servants are leaving and the Baron, like you said, he works al- he's alone in yeah. his labor- laboratory. His monster is strapped to a slab with large balls of electricity hovering above Oh, yeah. That's got all the classic, you know, it's got the big bulbs and then like the little lightning bolts going from, and there's little smoke coming out of the beakers. This is a great laboratory. This is what you want to see in a laboratory. Definitely. Right? Um, he checks the monster. He, and there's nothing. Nothing's happening. He lifts him up, and he does some science stuff. Yeah, he's got him on a slab. And then the monster moves, and he's wearing ancient dental wear. Ancient, ancient dental wear? He's got a bunch of like hardware. Oh. It looks like a, something a dentist would give you in the year of our Lord. Yeah, he, he, he like starts to breathe. You see him breathing, and then he realizes, you know, and, and uh, the Baron's like, oh, fuck, this is going to work. I did it. This is going to work. I did the thing. He, and he, then he basically uh, just rips out of the restraints that he's in. And he approaches the good doctor. Yeah, right? and then the doctor's like, "Oh fuck, this is not near as cool." Now he picked up something. It was like a a, a syringe. He had like a syringe or something in oh, his I hand. I missed that. Yeah, he had like a syringe in his hand. Like I guess he was gonna like stab him with a, a, a epipen. I'm <laughs> the uh, the the uh, Frankenstein's monster was bitten by a bee or stung by a bee. <laughs> bitten by a bee. <laughs> you know, they always say like they always say it's Frankenstein. No, no, no. Frankenstein is the scientist. The, this is just the Frankenstein's monster. monster. Or the, yeah, or the monster, whatever you want to call. It. And he's uh, so he approaches him and he puts his hand around his neck. Oh, it starts squeezing. And he's like, and normally he's I like that guy. stuff. You're into that? Oh yeah, a little bit. So usually the ladies like to be choked, but oh. you're, you're into choking, huh? Oh, oh, is that how it's supposed to go? I've been doing it no, wrong. However you want it to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, so he's he's got his hands around his neck and he's like. Like as he's coming at him, he's pushing him backwards, and he accidentally knocks him to a switch. And whatever that switch does, it hurts the monster. Yeah, thankfully, like electrocutes him, yeah. and he falls down. And he's like, "Whoo, jeez!" He's like, "Wait a minute, yeah, I put a murderer's brain in him, and that's why he instinctively wanted to kill me. Instead, I need the brain of a good, intelligent man, like Jason or Blake. Well, I don't know about intelligent for me, but maybe for you, perhaps. So uh, the next scene." You, you go to a, a good bar. man brain. He said, "I need a good man brain." A man brain. <laughs> good no, good man brain. Good man brain. They go to a. The next scene is is at a bar slash inn, and a couple arrives, and it's a man and a woman, and they need a room. Right, and we come to find out that's Paul and Christina Hel- Helbert. Hel- and, uh, Hel- Helpert or something. Helbert. Helbert. 
And they and the man, uh, when they sit down at a table. They say, we need a room. He's like, yeah, give me a few minutes. And they're sitting at a table, and the man appears to be ill. And they're there. And he doesn't have a license for it either. <laughs> Usually, they request a license to become ill. Not in this, not in this time. The year this was released the in fifty eight. <laughs> that's a different time. It's a for swinging party in the fifties. They're they're looking for help. That's what they're looking for. And they say um, while they're talking at this table, they say the name Frankenstein, and oh. then the the entire inn like hushes up. It's like someone like scratched a record, right? <laughs> and it, it's, it, they said, you know, we need the help of uh, Baron Frankenstein, and everybody stop. And there is like cut to shots of numerous people. There's probably seven different cuts. Of people just looking shocked. The name of Baron, Doctor Baron Frankenstein, by per- any other name, <laughs> precedes him and upsets everyone so much that they they stop in their tracks and they want to see what's happened. And then this is this is the part that confused me because they're like, ah, let's get the hell out of here because they realized what they said upset everybody. And I thought, oh, they just didn't stay. They end up staying at the inn after all. But I thought they just left in a hustle. Well, I thought that they left because he's like. I- he, you know, he he obviously made he made everybody uncomfortable, but I, I felt like he couldn't wait any longer. He needed the help. He, he was looking for okay. help, and he couldn't wait until the next morning. And that's that's, a, that's why both of us watch it independently, right. so they, we can see. Two they didn't want to go to the castle in the storm. Yes, but they do it anyway. They arrive at the Baron's house. It's like you said. It's Paul and Christina Halpert. And the um, uh, they knock on the door, and uh, the the Baron's door weighs seven hundred pounds. Oh God! It, it takes forty five minutes to open. You know, as soon as they wind up at the Frankenstein's house, I think this guy who's sick, Paul, like his brain's coming out of his head. Oh yeah! I you, me- immediately think the Fr- Frankenstein says, "I want a brain," and this guy's like, oh, "I'm deathly ill." Hey, I'm fucking. I know I can put two and two together. Right. So they sit down and they're talking to uh, uh, Baron, not Baron Corbin. Oh, I wish. Oh. Love that guy. I love when he goes, shut up! Oh, I love when he says that. <laughs> so they sit down and talk to him. And they're like, hey, we know that you, uh, you know, he's like, oh, you, need, you know, my, my husband's sick. He's like, I'm not a doctor. I'm like, well, I know, but we know that you, you've you been doing studies and, you know, you can create life. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. They said yeah. you can create life. Hopefully, you can prevent death because this is a matter of life and death. Yeah, and he's like, nope, I ain't going to do it. Unethical, not doing it. And then, please, please do it. Here's all of my jewelry. Please take this. I want you to help us. And he says, he says no. And then he looks at Paul's hands. He's like, you got some good hands. Yeah, nice hands. Like, are you a sculptor? Or no, he says, what, what do you do? He's like, I'm, I do sculpting. That's what he does. I yeah. would think that the, if somebody that sculpts would have like a lot of like callous Callous, hands dried cut up hands and the doctor says oh you know i can't i can't help you please leave and maybe someone in the village that you came from go to a doctor they'll be able to help you more so he refuses to help them and so they leave and 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 and, and the wife is pretty pissed she's not happy about this the husband's like i'm fucking tired i don't feel good i'm not gonna argue with this guy The, the husband is at the point where he's so sick he just wants to sleep and the woman's like i can see the forest for the trees this fucker needs some help or he's toast so they go back uh, to the lab. It's just Doctor Frank uh, Baron von Frankenstein. I keep saying, I keep wanting to say von. I'm yeah. going to keep saying it. All I right. think it sounds right. Baron von Erich. He was one of the famous wrestlers, the the von the von Erich boys. God bless him. Back in the lab, it appears that the monster is wrapped up like a mummy and suspended in the air. And then he says, uh, uh, Frankenstein says to himself um, that the mo- says, "Hey, just wait a couple days. Wait three, three days. days." So apparently. He's looking at this sick guy. He's, he's like, like, I need guy, a brain. This guy ain't going to make it any longer than three days. Three days, this dude is dead as a doornail. Next scene, uh, they're at the end. His, uh, Christina and her husband, and her husband's laying in the bed, and the doctor's there, and the, and the doctor's like, ah, there's nothing else I can do. And he like walks out, and she's pissed off. She's like, you know, I, I went to Baron von Frankenfurter, and he wouldn't help me, and you know, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. don't talk about that guy. I don't, yeah. have, you know, I have anything to do with it. I want nothing to do with Frankenstein." And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, they argue for a little bit. It's basically Christina just mad. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden, you hear a thump, and then Jason's dick is on the table. <laughs> oh boy, I wish that was the case. Instead, it was uh, Paul, the uh, the guy who was sick earlier. He's dead. And Christine's like, ah, he's a dead guy now. And she took her uh, necklace off and put it on him, right. which is weird because I don't wear a necklace. I, I wouldn't want a girl's necklace on. If I'm dead, don't put a girl's necklace on me. Take all my clothes, give it to Goodwill, do what you ever you want with my body. I'm dead. What's it gonna yeah, do? It doesn't matter to me. Uh, then it cuts off and, and it says part two. Mm-hmm. It never said part one. 
<laughs> so I was like, why are you even putting part two we in there? We are to assume what we just saw was part one. I was like, uh, we understand there was a cigarette commercial for Lucky Strikes, <laughs> non-filtered Lucky Strikes. I'll buy one today. Uh, uh, the scene is they're at the at the funeral of Paul, and um, you know because they're all dressed in black, and the priest is saying, "Oh man, lay lay, lay thy the rest, yep. young gentleman." Uh, and in the background, in basically one of these tombs, like well, old big Victorian tombs, but like had like, a tunnel in them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Baron's just hanging out in the, in the shadows. He's he's like he's rubbing the, his hands here, like this he, is the shit I've been waiting for. We got a fresh dead brain. So they uh, they all leave and. Um, uh, Baron walks up to the Undertaker, the wrestler, the famous wrestler, the Undertaker, and everyone yelled "old school." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, don't bury this today. Wait until the morning." And the guy's like, "I don't want to lose my job." Yeah, <laughs> just like that. I feel like he's here with me right now. Right, and he hands him some coins, some gold niblets. He hands him a bunch of gold <laughs> niblets. <laughs> And, and then all, <clears throat> all of a sudden, Undertaker's like, I'm, I'm fine, you know. As, yeah. long, as long as my brother Kane doesn't come. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. So that night, the Baron heads back to the graveyard. And he, rem- I can't tell if he's remo- he just removes the head of the man or just the brain. And he brings it back in like a knapsack. Yeah, I, I wrote that. I said, Baron is in the lab with a bag of, bag of brains. <laughs> bag of brains. Christine uh, then is like later gets some flowers from the funeral home, and then she goes to the graveyard, and she sees the grave is still open. Yeah, the next morning. And furthermore, the necklace that she had put around her dead Paul is laying right on the ground. So that's to assume that he cut the head off, because otherwise, how else would the necklace She knows be someone had futzed with the grave because yeah. that necklace is there. So she goes back to the inn, and she's pissed off, and she's like, I need to, I need to call the cops. And this is where I was like, Oh, I guess they did stay at the end. Earlier in the beginning, I was like, they ran out of there because they got scared of everyone's response to the sure. word Frankenstein. But no, they did stay at the end. Um, and so uh, she's he, he, she's talking to the inn master, whatever his name inn is. Inn master, yeah. And then uh, over uh, is the undertaker, drunk. Drunk off his shankster. And uh, Christina has a conversation with him. And she's like, I'm going to call the cops on you because you should have buried him like yesterday. He's like, I, I, I didn't. Don't tell anybody. I don't want to lose my job. And she's like, no, no. I think the cops need to know about this. He gets pretty freaked out, so he gives up all oh, the yeah. info. Oh, yeah. And you know what? To be honest with you, the interrogation was not that extensive to where he should have. He he's should, pretty drunk. He could have held out a little longer. <laughs> but she's pissed. And he's like, yeah, it was the Baron. He uh, he told me not to cover the grave for reasons I don't know. He just told me to do it, and he gave me golden niblets. <laughs> and uh, so she decides to not go to the police, and instead she confronts the Baron He's like, hey, you know what? I don't know what you're talking about. Please leave. And then you know what? Another <laughs> loud crash. Jason's dick falls out. My onto cock flops out. <laughs> again. <laughs> the Baron it's a very po- cock-centric pod- pilot. 1958s are all about big, f- giant dick meat. Uh, the Baron pushes her out of his, of his uh, house, he says, and then he approaches the monster who's trying to escape its chains. Yeah, because that's what they heard. They heard the thumping of the monster trying to escape. Yep. And, um, and, uh, uh, Baron von Frankenfurter mm-hmm. says, "Stop!" Like he's like ordering the monster to stop. Like that's just gonna be like, "Oh, okay, I'll, I'll stop." And he does for a second, and then he sees Christina, and, and Christina comes in, and the monster sees Christina. She sees him. She's freaking out. Well, the Baron's like talking to him, like, "Hey, is I took your brain from uh, from your dead body, and now you're in this body." And yeah, Christina's like witnessing the whole thing, so she's like putting together the pieces, like, "Oh my god." This this giant atrocity in front of me has the brain of my lovely Paul in it. Right. right? You know, we came to to Baron to, to get his to save his life. Yep. And now, he, he his brain is saved. Paul kind of remembers who he is too through the, the Baron talking to him, and then, um, but he can't like properly communicate. He's just, he's he's exactly like. The classic Frankenstein, you would think, just kind of uh, walking yeah. around, hands in front of him. Very and, slow. But it's in there somewhere. Like, he's understanding to a degree that he is Paul, but he's in this new body. Right. And he, he, it's hard to come to terms with that right off the bat. Hell yeah, it would be. Uh, so the monster gets mad and, and, and breaks from his change. And, and it's chains, not change, chains. Right. Uh, break these chains. Niblets. He, uh, he, per- he pushes the Baron aside, and he pursues Christine because he sees her. And he's like, I know who that girl is. And then uh, she's running away because she's terrified. Oh, and it's the classic horror scream. Yep. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> a 
couple more, but. I shall scream because my husband's body is disgusting. She falls down the stairs. Classic fall down the stairs. Yep. And this and this ensues a, uh, and the monster picks her up. He does. It's his wife. His wife. His or, wife. or should I say, his wife. Monster's wife. <laughs> <laughs> the Baron hunts down the monster in, in his own house, because they're still inside the house, and he's got a gun. And the monster uh, sees himself in the mirror while he's holding Christine, and he is horrified. And he just smashes that mirror, which is bad luck. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. If, if having your dead brain in a, a rotting corpse isn't bad luck enough, he smashed a mirror. And so uh, uh, Baron pulls out a gun. He's going to shoot him. He shoots him twice, once in the shoulder and then like once in the stomach, but that doesn't stop the beast. Nope. They wrestle, and the doctor is thrown out the window, and he's, he's, the Baron's not dead, and the monster chases him through the night. And this is one of those classic ch- horror chases. Yeah. Baron's running his ass off. Cut to a monster Ugh. going real Ugh. slow, but is always Ugh. is was always very close to him. I, and I, you know what? I liked that. It was funny. Meanwhile, Christine awakens inside, and the three make their way through the woods into the graveyard. Right, and um, the Baron picks up a shovel, like to like throw it at him. Yeah, and Frankenstein, uh, the monster, just. Snaps it in half. He's like, fuck this, man. That's a twig. Uh, Christine uh, tries like to talk sense to in him, and because he's got the Baron in his grips, right? He's like, "Don't kill him. He was. He, this is what he was trying to help us do. We, we did it. It's our own fault. We yeah. came to him and said, help us, and he did. And you know, and, and she's, she's like, you have a hideous face, uh, and a grotesque body, yeah. but you still have the brain of my husband. Like, I was thanks, like, thanks, bitch. <laughs> I was like, easy, <laughs> cunt bag. The monster hears what she's saying and purposefully falls into the open grave that for for Paul. And then uh, a fever and then the uh, doctor Baron, Baron von Frankenstein feverishly tries to cover him up with soil. Right, because somebody's right. coming. Yeah. And it's the cops. Yep. And right then they say, Hey, you know what? You can't be robbing graves, you're under arrest. And at the end of Frankenstein says, There's always tomorrow. And what I don't understand is, is how did he get out of it? Like to me, he was like, the cop's like, uh, you're under arrest. And he's like, wait a minute. I'm Baron von Frankenfurter. Yeah. It, it, there was no real, there was no real, like, he, he gave this little speech where he did say that, you know, there's always tomorrow. But there was never, like, the cop never said, okay, I'm not going to arrest you. You're going, you're going in the slammer. I, I don't think this was set in 1958. This was oh. set long before that. Oh. But what I do think is that Frankenstein morally good or bad whatever he was doing he was on to something right so he was saying you know what this whatever this minor kerfuffle with the law is there's always tomorrow there's something i have i'm on to something here right all right i got you but you know what i'm on to yeah turbulence please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence I often like to say, why didn't this show work? And in this instance, I have a little bit of information on why some people think it didn't work. Oh. Uh, friction developed between the two studios, Hammer and Columbia, because Columbia at the time held the TV rights to the Universal Films, Monster Films uh, series uh, through their Shock Theater film package and wanted to use that uh, version of Frankenstein. Hammer, on the other hand wanted to uh, base the series on their own Curse of Frankenstein. The only real input Hammer had was in the choice of Anton Differing, who played Frankenstein, very much like the original Peter Cushing. Now, the series, uh, since the series, rather, was intended for an American audience, Columbia rejected all six of Hammer's scripts in favor of one written in-house. The film was co-written by Henry Kuttner and his wife C.L. Moore with Kurt Soniak, who directed a veteran of Universal Horror Films, including The Wolfman, disgusted with their lack of input, Hammer went back to England, leaving Anthony Hines to represent the company. Soon, he also gave up. Wow. So these two companies came together to create this thing. And then when they made it, they're like, then they bickered about how they were going to do it. So was this shelled because it didn't work or because a couple of companies couldn't put on their big boy pants and work it out? I don't know. Question. I don't know what is there like you having watched this and putting your mind back in 1958 in your mind. mind. What? Why do you not think this worked? Um, like I said earlier, it, it 
there's only so many Frankenstein stories you can go. I mean, if they did a 26 episode package is what they were planning, you have to find 28, 26 things for Frankenstein monster to do all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, yes, okay, this episode is about the girl. The next episode is the townspeople chasing him. Yeah. Then what? You know what I mean? You it, know, they made like 10 movies about Michael Myers from Halloween, you know? Right. But uh, the third film rolls around. Michael Myers isn't in the season of The Witch at all. It was as they're trying to build like an anthology series of just different scary films. With I the- love anthology. <laughs> Mostly the one, the Beatles one. Remember the Beatles anthology? One, one two, there was no three. What's that? Anthology. One oh. and two, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the word means. You don't know what the word? <laughs> oh, is that why there's three discs? I don't know. Look, all I'm saying <laughs> is that they could have done something like that here, but it sounds like they wanted to go full steam with Frankenstein and his monster. So I don't know. Like, like I said, uh, default-wise, you hear the word Frankenstein, you immediately go to the monster, but it's the it's the doctor. So maybe... Maybe there, maybe Frankenstein the Doctor was cooking up shit week after week. He's, okay. Maybe maybe there's a small three episode story arc with a with the monster, or maybe he's creating like a some sort of other creature. You know what I mean? Maybe he's like always a, creating different things. Sure. Or, maybe, or and since it's for the you know the the monster universe, or whatever. Mm-hmm. He maybe he has a run in with uh, uh, Doctor Hyde. Yeah. Or Doctor Jekyll. I mean, maybe he runs into these other the universal swamp monsters. Thing. Yeah. It was it was Aquaman. I don't think Aquaman was part of it. It was Werewolf, the Mummy. X-Men. God damn, not the X-Men. Werewolf, Mummy, Frankenstein, mm. Dracula, Swamp Thing. Dracula. Oh, oh. Excuse <laughs> me. Whew. So, you know, maybe maybe we do, you would incorporate those villains somehow so you can spin them off or something. But if it was just about him with the monster, you would think, how does he do that? How does that work for week after right. week, episode after right. episode? It doesn't make how sense. How many times can you fail... And not just give up. Yeah, I think the same thing. But you know uh, what I don't know is what other people think. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. <laughs> she said upright position. Upright position makes me think of an erect penis. Uh, final destination. Mine makes me think of reverse cowgirl. <laughs> final descent. This is where the... We're high in the sky. You did everything in the middle, and I'm about to do. I'm about to bring it back down. Yeah, because you get it up. Uh, you do every, like I said. You do everything in the middle, and then you bring it back down. And we're bringing it back down right now. We're going down, and we're saying while we're making our final descent, let's talk about what people from around the world had to say about the tales of Frankenstein. And the first place we look is Internet Movie Database IMDb. Blake, what do you think the score is? Six point five. Six point five. It's actually you reverse that. It's a five point six. Okay, and that's from two hundred and thirty three ratings. Wow, that's, not, that's 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 a good amount for this. That's age, a, that's this a age. nice healthy chunk. That's a healthy chunk of heap and helping. Viewer reviews: Failed television pilot makes for a decent short film. Six out of ten scars. This is from Gavin sixty nine forty two from the U.S. of A. Uh, this one crossed my desk through a box set. I'm not sure, uh, though, easily available. How easily available it is, but if you get a chance, check it out. Why uh, is he? Why is he watching movies on his or TV shows at his desk? I don't. I don't know. To me, I would say go I to your living on a room. Couch. Get in your lazy boy recliner. Oh, I'd love to have a lazy boy. Put recliner. your feet up. It's only 27 minutes long, so you hardly be wasting time uh, on this better than average attempt at a good horror story. Tales from the Crypt has done worse. You ever watch that shit? I never watched it. Tales from the Crypt is dumb. The only reason you watch Tales of the Crypt is because you're... the old skeleton guy? No, you watch it because you're 12 years old and you want to see some nipples. Oh. I lived in a time before internet pornography, and I can tell you the best ways to masturbate. Give me the top three. Um, you got uh, HBO Free Weekend, right? Right. <laughs> on the very uh, real chance it is not a free weekend, it's the squiggly lines on HBO before the fuzz. You can see the squiggly lines like, hey, I think I see some dude going down on a broad, <laughs> right? Um, Sears catalog rolls around. Oh. Boom. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Jason, why are some pages of my Sears catalog missing? I don't know. I'm masturbating. I don't know, Mom. <laughs> Those are the top reasons, or ways to do it, rather. Um, An untold tale of Frankenstein. Now, this is from Wes Connors from L.A. If this, indeed, the pilot for an unsold television series, uh, it's difficult to understand how they were going to come up with the nearly 40 per season story ideas. I agree. Um, 
as a short movie, writer slash director Kurt Sodmak, uh, which we had mentioned a few times, and I've never pronounced his name correctly, does uh, surprisingly well in this format, creating a new story to work within the existing Frankenstein mythos, and it's much better than average 1958 half-hour teleplay. Okay. Um, if you like Hammer Horror, 8 out of 10 scars. This is from Winner 55 from the United States. This one's high marks as a point of historical origin, and thus very important. A well-done B-movie horror short in any event. Okay, short and sweet. Failed TV pilot, but surprisingly good. 7 out of 10 scars from R.C. Sloan 5 from U.S. Well worth picking up as this is part of many different public domain horror collections. I picked this up in Mill Creek's 250 movie horror collection, and this has been one of the big highlights. The quality of this print was very good, with clear audio and a nice picture. I will have to say that that is correct. When when you told me it was from 1958, I was very worried. You did one of these. <sighs> did you hear the shiver? Yeah, I did. Classic horror, 9 out of 10 scars. Author Jacob John Taylor 1 uh, from Barry's Bay, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Canada. 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 I love Canada. Hey, ca- hey Canada. Hey, when it's in the middle of summer and it's hot outside, a little Canada. Slice up some Canada. Slice up some Canada. <laughs> Do not think that just because something is old, it cannot be scary. This is scarier than most new horror movies. It has a great storyline, great acting, and great special effects. If you like scary movies, then you need to see this. Hmm. A lot of positive sure. reviews. Uh, it's rocking a 5.6, which is not great. It's not terrible, I guess. But it's also a lot of people grading it based off of 2017 Ooh. and not going back yeah. in their minds. Mind. Speaking of grading. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11.11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. We're landing this bitch. This is why people tune in. They say, ooh, Tales of Frankenstein. I don't want to hear the banter. I don't want to hear the interesting facts. I don't want my brain to go back to 958. Right. What I want is a number associated with the pilot. I want to know what you think. One to seven. That's the scale taken from the popular show from the 19 ad 90s called Wings. Number one is a Roy Biggins. That's a character on the show. There's a bunch of other characters. It goes all the way up to number seven. That's Brian Hackett. Therein lies the score. Sure. Therein lies what you think. That's the bed. What I think. That's the bed that we're laying in. This is the bedrock of Couch Pilots. Between one and seven is the bed we're laying in. Yabba dabba do. Captain Philip, rest assured, I turn to you, rhymes on purpose. How do you rate Tales of Frankenstein? I'm going to give you a little info. Mm -hmm. Okay? I wish that you would. I'm going to tell you a couple of things I liked about this. Oh, good. All right. This is the format to do it. First of all, it wasn't cheesy like most of the 50s shows we watched. The acting wasn't cheesy and and overdramatic. The story was great. The flow was good. I really enjoyed the flow. It was dark, like not dark, like scary dark, but just you know, dark it was, in its tone. Right. Uh, the moral dilemma of Frankenstein, Baron's. Uh, I love the classic scream and the classic classic chase through the woods there at the end. Yeah. No CGI or special effects. I didn't need it. I'm giving this a six, baby. Holy shit! I loved it. I loved it. I had so much fun watching this. I got to agree. This is really good. Um, this is old. This is a 60, 70 years old at this point. The quality was good, which which really helped, too, to keep you in 60 it. years. But, yes, the quality is good. You can see very clearly the audio is good. It's got a good pace. It's got a good pace. There's nothing so outlandish or ridiculous here. It's They totally keep you in it for the full 27. I couldn't believe how fast it was. Oh, yeah. It was very good. I was leaning towards a five. I agree with you. I'm going to give this a six as well. This is good. Now, whether or not it would sustain itself as a series, that's another story. I don't think. I don't think so. You know, maybe right. if you want to do like a six episode thing, but back then they're churning out like this person said in one of the reviews, like forty fucking episodes a year. That's a ton of shit. Sure. On a standalone by itself, this is a six. Going forward as a series, fingers crossed. Good luck to you. That's right? why I didn't give it a seven. I would have given it a seven, but I knew there was no way for it to keep going. This is fantastic. This is really good. I would say check if you have even a remote interest in the horror, the macabre, the monsters, Universal, Frankenstein. Check this out for sure. Or Dracula. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. 
Aw. And with that, we close the book on Tales of Frankenstein, and we will never mention that show again. Ever. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of Back to Norm. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. A sketch comedy show starring Saturday Night Live alum Norm MacDonald. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links. They're right there on our show notes, or go to YouTube. And, and you, you know, know what, what to do, do too. <laughs> what do you think about that? Nice. I, I, I really enjoyed this one. It was good. It was, it was probably the best one we've seen in a while besides the Golden Girls. I feel good. Oh, I feel great. You know, you watch a pilot... And you never know what you're going to get. Just like uh, Forrest Gump once said, you never know what you're going to get, like, right? Just like sex with a fat girl. He had diabetes because he had but sex. Boo, boo. And he had so many fucking chocolates, he never knew what he was going to get. Mm. And then he had sex with a fat girl. He didn't know what he was going right. to get. And in. then she had AIDS, didn't she? And then that girl ended up having AIDS the whole time. So um, however that turned out for Forrest Gump, God bless you. But I tell you, when I watch a pilot and I don't know what I'm going to get and it turns out to be good, I just feel good. I feel good. And then that first thing I do, mm-hmm. whenever I feel good, yeah. Is go on the computer. Type, 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 type. Because if I'm feeling good, it's time to spend some money. Yeah. Where do I? Where do you go to spend money? To. Well, I know there. I, I know what I like. You know. It, I know it, what I like. Like, like. The show is like, built on the back like, of his songs. Like, I know what I like. And I think, oh, I like this thing. I like that thing. Well, I'll go to this specific site for this thing or that site for that. That's Burp. that's stupid. Pump the brakes. There's one site to go. For everything, and I mean literally just about everything. Sure, Amazon.com, uh, folks. You can go to FCFNetwork.com, and there is a uh, Amazon banner. Also, in our show notes, there's a hot link or yeah. hyperlink uh, to Amazon. Now, what this is, this is it taking it's taking it to normal, you know, mega store Amazon. Yeah, but it's going through a porthole that we get credit for this. You buy whatever you want. It, it there, we're gonna get a little kickback. Very small, but something to help keep the lights on. Go to Amazon.com. Whatever you like, put it in the search and then bring it up. You'll see the price, and then go through our banner, and you'll see that same price. Right. Clicking wherever, clicking through our banner doesn't change the price. All it does is acknowledges that. Hey, guess what? I like Couch Pilots. I like those guys. They're friendly. They're handsome. They have huge mega cocks. I love those guys. Right. I want to support them in some fashion. Yeah, and it supports FCF Network as a whole. So if you listen to any of the other shows, still go to fcfnetwork.com and use that banner, use that hyperlink, and it's going to help out the big picture, yeah. the brain of this whole thing. Yeah. The, 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 the Baron Von Frankenstein of FCF Network. We're just a couple of jerks right here in central Illinois trying to get some fun started. We get... I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. Gidget. 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 <laughs> I didn't know you loved your radio head so much. I'll, Pueblo Honey. <laughs> That's my. That's the only <laughs> album of theirs I like. Pueblo. Pueblo, honey. Is that what it's called? Yeah. What, no. What's the real name of it? I think it's Pablo, honey. Same but, difference. But I like that you said Pueblo instead. Eight one oh oh nine. Pueblo, Colorado. Oh boy. I'm here for comic relief. Couchpilotspodcast.com. If you go there, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a search engine where you can look at any of our past shows, and you can listen to them. What you're going to see is a portal to Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, our email account. You can get a hold of us any which way of those. Our just phone by number going there. our phone number was on that website as well. Nine ten pilots one. That's nine one zero seven four five six eight seven one. Call us. Yeah, put it in your phone. It's on the show notes. Go ahead, you know, when you stop driving, don't do it while you're driving. But when you're done driving, you know, look up the show notes. It's it's right there. Put it in as a widget. Put it there as a widget. And then after that, go to fcfnetwork.com. That's the website for all of the shows. We have eight shows on the network now. A lot of fun. Eight tiny reindeer. That's all right. right. All of our shows are named after a reindeer. Couch Pilots. Metal Hand of God. Low Blow. Let's try this. B-Movie Breakdown. Drunken Lullabies. Hey, uh, Upper (laughs) Uppercut. Broken Funny Bone. Broken Funny Bone, which is coming out here in uh, about a week. Let's try this. All these different podcasts, all free. They're all fun. They're right there at fcfnetwork.com. Subscribe. Enjoy. Know that you're part. This is why, like, I was listening to an interview the other day with uh, Billy Corgan, right? Okay. He's a lead singer of Smashing sure. Pumpkins. And they're talking about how, like, 
when something becomes popular, it's not cool anymore. Right. Well, we've never been popular, so sure. we're the coolest fucking shit on the planet. <laughs> Listen to our show week after week. Know that you're supporting an independent mom and pop brand. Go to Amazon. Go to craftbeerclub.com. Get a hold of us. We're having a lot of fun. You and I have a lot of fun week sure. after week, and we want you to be a part of it. Tell right. someone. Tell someone about this show. Let them know how much fun you're having with us week after week and get them in on the action. Definitely. Captain Philip, rest assured, anything else you'd like to say to our frequent flyers today before we head into that sunset? Yeah, I I have to go back. Uh, A couple episodes ago, we were talking about heaven. Oh, heaven is a place on earth. And I had made some comments that after listening to the show, I realized I'm I'm a dirtbag. Seven minutes in heaven? Yeah. You're talking about the lady that... That's dead. uh, Yeah. And (laughs) I do have a little bit of moral standards. We talk a lot. We joke a lot. Uh, and maybe I went too far. So this is like my formal apology. That's the line, you think? Oh, I, I think talking about having sex with a dead person that you dated. Okay. I, yeah, I, I think I put it a little too far. Okay. So I do want to apologize. Uh, to her family? <laughs> no, because her family is all dead. <laughs> oh, my God. Then who are you apologizing to? I'm just apologizing to people that might know her and just oh apologizing. My God. Apologizing to the Heavenly Father. Her above. whole family is dead. I, I think she has a brother that's alive. Oh mercy! But I, I just it was it was it was even I th- I felt like it was more tasteless than I, you're used to, and I I felt bad about it. I lost a little bit of sleep about it. So God I, damn, that's bad when you're apologizing. Holy shit! No, but I, honestly, I, I I think I took it a little too far, and I do apologize. All right, and with that apology. This pilot may have been You'll never get another apology again, so you better like it. Revel in it. Wallow in it and marinate in it because you're not getting another one. Uh, This pilot may have been rough, but it is always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next time. Amen. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for listening to Couch Pilots. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.